Good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm in my little cocoon dharma. My name is Rubert, or Bobby, please. Emperor of the Universe. And it's a tough gig, babe. Trust me. Perks? Yes, there are perks. Free parking. And they're thinking about naming a holiday after me somewhere in August. Who knows? Anyway. I want to talk about you. What are you doing? How are you living? Obviously, I'm no longer in Salt Creek. I'm actually up here visiting my son and my grandbabies. I'm proud to say that Dharma is now legal. I have her tags and she's insured even. I even got insured. $95 plus 60 I got to pay in a couple weeks. That's just the down payment. Plus $100 a month. I should have brought that up too. <clears throat> Progressive. Here's how fun. This is, I'm going to bring it up anyway. If you don't know, in one of my past videos, I talked about it. I got in an accident, a car accident. Never been in an accident before in my life. 51. They dropped me the day I talked to them and called them and told them about the accident and told them what was going on. <clears throat> it wasn't my fault, by the way. I'm still working on that. But basically, they dropped me a month before my policy, my year policy was up. And, I mean, they canceled my policy. Told me, sorry, we don't, we, your model is no longer a, a make, they don't make it, so we, we don't cover for collision. So I was paying 100 bucks for nothing. That's good stuff. And here gets better. <clears throat> they sent me a bill for the last month that I wasn't even insured. They canceled my policy, remember? So I got a bill for uh, $99 or some crap. When I went and called this insurance to get insurance for my vehicle, they told me that they were going to add that $99 onto my bill. Yes. So if you don't know this, if you work for a shady insurance company or you have a shady insurance car insurance company like Progressive <clears throat> and they screw you and cancel your policy, they're going to charge you for the rest of the year that you had the policy. I don't think you understand that. When you make contract for a year policy with them, they consider a year even if they dump your ass halfway through that year. They're going to charge you for the la end, end of the year as per contract for some bullshit reason. Shady as fuck. Pardon my French, but yeah, U-Haul is another one. I got to go down there and deal with them assholes. Not only did they mess with me and my kid because I, I couldn't pay my, you know, I lost, I basically should have, they should have auctioned that shit off months ago, whatever. But they're still harassing my kid about, the, I'm like, sure. You know, take it to credit, man. I'll, I'll pay with it. I'll deal with it. But they're harassing my kid about it. It's really bullshit. Plus, <clears throat> my sister just moved using a vehicle. We we actually hauled some of her dead husband's tools. I know I'm rambling. I don't care. It's my channel, babe. So we're hauling her dead husband's tools back to her, her his parents' house where her my nephew lives. And he's just a little shit. But anyway, I love him, though. Love him, like. So we're hauling it 18 miles tops. This is how this is 18 miles total. They tried to charge her for six gallons of gas after we'd already put two gallons in the damn thing coming back. So the gauge was exactly where it was. They were trying shisty, man. What the hell is wrong with these people? <sighs> Love and light. Seriously, in the time of the span, scan, plan, demic, whatever, you think the company's step and be more thoughtful and understanding of the situation that people are in. You all wasn't understanding about my situation. It wasn't about a lockdown. They were expecting their payment every damn month. They didn't, there was no moratorium on that. Um, you know, then again, if you were working at a grocery store, a liquor store, or a gas station, yeah, you were going to be open. You were not closed. But you still had to work. God bless you. But, and truckers. But everybody else was stuck in their little homes, so they couldn't do nothing. Anyway, I digress. <sighs> Love and light. We're above this, right, people? I don't want this video to be about, you know, the negativity in the world because you know how we are. We're supposed to generate the light. We're awesome. I can tell you about my grandbabies. Oh, my God. Talk about getting some loving. Cute as hell. Got the love and respect I was expecting. It was not like they were like, ooh, who are you, stranger danger? It was like, dude, full on getting full bear hugs from my grandson, Alex. I love him. He's awesome. And my grandbaby, she's just a little wild child, man. Lily is the best. Like, what can I say? She don't even talk yet. She's talking. She's super smart. 
but she don't want to talk. She's not using her words. She's expecting everybody to understand her mind. I'm thinking my, and this is how it works too. I'm learning about telepathy. I'm going to ramble. And I, and I studied that in my granddaughter when she was littler. She would telepathically tell me what she wanted. And we would, and I'd be like, okay. Like we'd be inside and we'd be hanging out and I'd be holding her. And, and I look at her and she's like, I'm like, you want to go outside? She's like, yeah. She'd tell, she'd like confirm it. I'm like, okay. So we go outside. She's like, yeah, look around. You know what I mean? So it's like she, and it was basic though. It was like, you got to understand where she was at, at that point. Really basic thought process. This is what I want to do. It's a very emotional, very basic, but you could feel it, right? So I was, so here's the problem is most people don't understand that or vibe on it. So they don't understand tele telepathy. They don't understand what she was trying to, I mean, maybe that's what all of us have. Maybe when we're little, maybe that we have telepathy. We have the ability to talk to other people with their minds, but we don't do that. They don't develop that ability within us as kids. So we have to use our words instead of our mind, which is interesting. Never know. I'm just saying, throwing that out there. I'm just observe, observing the world. This is what we do in our travels as we're wandering around. I like to observe it. I like to think of, you know, analytical about things. But yeah, that's what I'm plus, you know, she's, you know, my granddaughter. She's special. She's awesome. She's super empathic, too. Oh, my God. It was so cute. She had a little baby. She was, like, kissing it. And I was like, oh, my God. You look so cute. It's, like, very tender to this inanimate object. But it was a baby. I was like, oh my god, you're such an empath, I love you. And of course, the difference between an empath and as a kid, you can tell the kids that empath compared, not the crying ones, not all, that's not always necessary. Just the ones that are more thoughtful and sensitive to others, pains and suffering. If you get a kid beating the crap out of a tree with the bat, probably not an empath. But if you see feeling bad about the tree, getting beat by the kid, you're probably an empath. So, yeah. I mean, this is how empathic I was as a child. <clears throat> I was so empathic. I felt so bad for everybody, and I felt for everything, let's put it that way. That when we were kids, I remember in school, when we'd be in lunch line, and we'd be getting our milk, we get a choice between chocolate milk, and you get regular milk, and it was like in the little cartons, and I was, I mean, I was a kid, I was like early 70s, so they had the little crates, and you just walk up and grab your, you know, choose what you want, you want. And I always noticed that nobody ever chose the regular milk, and I felt bad for that, I was like, I felt bad for the regular milk, because I, I mean, Who's not going to go for the chocolate milk? I love chocolate milk. I'm, I'm bringing chocolate milk right now. So you know what I mean? I felt bad for that regular whole milk. It's good stuff. It's just nobody wanted it. Go figure. Anyways, I'm going to end this video with something very simple and basic for you as a, as a thought process. You're never going to get anywhere if you don't go anywhere. It's very simple. I learned this in the desert by myself, surrounded by nobody. Thinking, what do you want, Robert? Do you want gold? Do you want riches? Do you want fame? Do you want love? Yes, I want love. I want to be adored and adore somebody. I want to be held and hold somebody. I want to, yeah, I want that connection. I need that. It's been a long time, right? So that's what I want. But guess what? They're not going to just walk out of the freaking desert, right? I'm going to have to put myself out there into the world. I'm going to have to go around. I'm going to have to meet people. Yikes. But yeah, so... That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to change up your routine. Go for a walk every day. Go to the park. Go river, ocean, a mountain, whatever you got. If you got in the middle of the city, good, God bless you. Go on a rooftop. Get some fresh air. Get or equivalent of <clears throat> if you're in the city. But yeah. Change it up. So you're, you're forcing yourself to try to do stuff. Go to different stores. You're meeting people. Connecting. That's what we need regardless. So yeah. Freezing here, isn't it? Freaking huge. And that's why I'm thinking about going to Newport because it's Newport's like a maybe the lows are 40s, but it's like the, it's the sea level right there at the ocean. It's usually you know between 40 and 50 in the winter, and in the summer it's like 70 degrees. In the in the daytime, it's beautiful. Last summer was awesome. It was like 116 in in Phoenix. I mean not Phoenix. It's 116 in Seattle, Washington. I literally beat that heat by two days. I was on the ocean. There's a video about it in my past archives. Yeah. And it was beautiful. I was like, oh my God. I was like, ah, I'm not a big fan of the super hot. No, no, no. Anyway. So yeah, Newport's going to be nice this summer. Maybe I'll go hang out there and get a job. And just go. And it kind of defeats the whole wandering around and doing BLM. and But jazzy videos I can do anywhere, right? It's just some passing knowledge. 
So get out there. I ramble, I know, it's early. Get out there, make yourself visible. They don't see your face, they're never gonna love, they're gonna never fall in love with you. And and this mug needs some work. You know, I gotta shave, got some razors, take care of that. You know, yeah, shave up your stuff, babe. Take care of business, people look good, because you never know when you're gonna run into the one. Or, or the equivalent of, or halfway decent lover. I don't know, I'm rooting for you. Anyways, I'm gonna go throw some cards and have some fun and pay off my grandbabies and enjoy my weekend. Have a wonderful day. I love you. God loves you in the universe. I'm still digging you in those damn pants. Namaste. Have a good day. Okay, bye.